What's up guys, this is Mike Loris bringing you more games from the Star Series Season 3. I said in the last set that I casted that that was from the winner's bracket, I think, but that was actually from the loser's bracket, I think. This is from the winner's bracket, I think. Uh, so if I'm correct in assuming all of this, then this is from the winner's bracket, the other set was from the losers. Uh, so the loser of the other set went home, and this one is going to determine who moves on and who gets dropped. I don't really know if that's for sure because uh, there's no real way where I could look at the brackets or anything, or not that I know of. Like, I was at this website, but it's pretty much a nightmare to navigate, so I'm just pretty much completely guessing at this point, but it really doesn't matter because good Dota is good Dota, and that is exactly what we've been seeing from these teams in this tournament. Picks already gone through. Ban Batrider, Chen, as well as Undying. The bands uh, looking pretty normal. CK being the uh, kind of outlier ban right there, but still fairly normal bans. Batrider Chen and Undying is going to give GDB a lot, a lot of early game. MYM, on the other hand, they're going to pick up Jakiro Tidehunter as well as the Shadow Demon. So they both have some pretty good early game lined up, a lot of support, a lot of early game utility. MYM, their ban is actually going to be the Pugna. Very interesting ban there. Uh, not commonly picked up, but Pugna is a very capable push capable pusher, but not only that, his nether ward severely punishes the likes of Jakiro and Tidehunter, who have very high mana costs. So, uh, MYM protecting themselves against that anti-team fight, prote protecting themselves from the push that'll come with a combination of Pugna Chen through that ban. GDB recognizing that MYM don't really have any dedicated damage dealers banning out the hard carries. MYM would probably do well to do the same, but they're instead going to ban out the Dazzle. Hmm. I think Kuroki played a Dazzle in another game that I casted. If I am... Maybe I'm just completely wrong. I probably am completely wrong. There's been so many games that are just all pretty much blurred in the same game now. GDB also going to ban out the Queen of Pain denying MYM a mid lane. So MYM, uh, they do have three support heroes. And they're probably not going to land them on the same lane. But uh, we might still see something like a Lashrak to pair up with a Shadow Demon. Could work very well. Get a very handy dual lane there and then have a protected farmer. But really with three support heroes and with a Tidehunter who could possibly go into the long lane. MYM do have a lot, a lot of lane flexibility. GDB, uh, the only thing that's really set in stone for them is the fact that Chen is going to be going to the jungle. I have yet to see a Chen or Enchant just not go to the jungle. Because uh, why would you pick them otherwise, right? But Batrider can solo lane Undying. Most likely going to be uh, one of the supports on the tri lane. If not, uh, no, no, on the long line, actually. That's how Undying is most often lane. A very capable survival hero there. And the Shrak is going to be the pick for GDB. So it looks like even without that Pugna, they're going to go for a little bit more pushing. Of course, the Shrak, very powerful, even when you're not looking at him through a pushing lens. A great support hero. And, well, GDB, the only thing that they need right now is a farmer. Uh, someone for Black to play. I think I Black has played Undying in the past, and that's still a possibility if GDB want to go for a really powerful early mid-game. Just pick up something like Windrunner, and then go with that. MYM gonna go for a Kunkka. I like it. I said before that they could pick up with Lashrak to pair up the Shadow Demon. The Kunkka, same exact principle, except Kunkka uh, is a little bit more physical damage based. Kind of uh, turning the tables on GDB, actually. GDB used to be known as Mao Sports, and they would experiment quite a bit with Shadow Demon and Kunkka. I think that was pre-TI2, though, uh, after the uh, Team Switcheroo. Then I don't think they've actually experimented all that much with it, but Shadow Demon Kunkka, very stable lane. You could pair it up pretty much everywhere, and it'll survive. So with that Kunkka pick, they could also potentially run an aggressive tri lane, and GDB going to run a Warlock. Wow, that is... Well, okay, so they're not going to have a primary right-click damage dealer. They're going to go for a lot of team fight with the amplification from Undying's Flesh Golem plus the Fatal Bonds of the Warlock. There's going to be a lot of damage flying around from MYM, possibly going to be a farming Lashrak. Warlock usually doesn't receive that much farm just because he ex he's really doesn't need it. Even if he does get it, he can't really use it all that effectively. But GDB going to go with a lot of healing, a lot of health manipulation. They have three heals on the team with Hannah God, uh, Undying Soul Rip, plus Warlock Shadow Word, even though usually he doesn't go for that Shadow Word until later on in the game, if at all. That Warlock pick, uh, one of the heroes that's seen the least in games, just because he's so, like, overtime based. 
and it's not as like hugely intense over time as Venomancer. It's more subtle. But MYM getting a last pick up that Tinker, probably going to be a mid lane. Still, MYM do have a lot of lane flexibility, but really with the Warlock pick for GDB, they also have a lot of flexibility. And wow, it's going to be Sing Sing playing the Warlock. That's well, Sing Sing is pretty much 100% of the time, or like, I guess 98% of the time, going to be playing mid for GDB. So it's going to be a farming warlock. I am completely wrong there. Very, very weird from GDB. I don't know if I like it or not, but uh, I'll think about it while I'm going over who is playing on the MYM side. We have Rise on the Rise on the Shadow Demon. I saw a Kunkka. I'm like, wait, Rise is not playing the Kunkka. Kunkka is being played by Balsam. Calculus is on the Tinker, so he's going to go for the mid lane. Atsy on the Jakiro, and Quix is on that Jakiro. On the GDB side, Black, the primary, uh, their hard carry player for GDB is going to be playing the Undying, which probably means he's going to head towards that bot lane. Uh, Kroki's on the Chen. Note, surprise there. Bambo on the Bat Rider. It's going to be a hard lane Bat Rider. Sing Sing, as I said before, on the Warlock, going to go mid lane most likely, and Alex is supporting as the Lashrak. Now, uh, Bambo on the Bat Rider, long lane Bat Rider, doesn't do that fantastically, especially when he's most likely going to be up against uh, Balsam on Kunkka. Plus Atsy on the Jakiro, plus Rise as the Shadow Demon, so uh, not much that he could actually do about that. He will be most likely forced to stack and pulling this creep camp, because otherwise he's just going to get completely owned the entire time. But that is probably going to be the fate of Bambo. And uh, Bat Batrider isn't really what you would call a jungling hero, but he actually doesn't do that bad. He could clear off a stack in very, very little time needs a couple of levels initially from you know clearing these. Uh, it's going to slow down Chen's farm a little bit, but I'm sure GDB will be more than happy to make that trade. Bot lane is going to be a farming Undying with the support Lashrak, so look to un look for Undying to get a lot of tankiness. Against the MYM squad, if he gets a fast pipe, well, that's going to be so, so amazing for them. Because Jakira will mean a whole lot less. Shadow Demon, eh, it doesn't really change him that much. Tidehunter will mean a whole lot less. Kunkka, a lot of his spell damage will mean a whole lot less. So you got the Ghost Ship and Torrent, a little bit mitigated there. And Tinker, uh, with the Missiles plus the March of the Machines counter push, will also mean a whole lot less. And since he's getting the farm, since that's not really out of the ordinary skill uh, item builds for Undying, he probably will get it eventually. Unless we see something like a Warlock getting it. And Warlock is going to go mid, going to go for Shadow Word. Versus a dual lane, this Warlock unfortunately is not going to do well. I kind of want to see Warlock get a lot of farm and do really well this game. Just because you never see Warlock, and if he constantly dies, then you're still never going to see Warlock. You're never going to see him in the future if he just doesn't do well. Uh, Bambo trying to make something happen on this top lane, trying to eke out as much experience as he's uh, as he could possibly get. It's going to be a farming tinker on the top lane. Anyway, hey, you could run a dual lane in the mid, dual lane on the top, doesn't really matter. Bambo. Taking already two ice paths from Jakiro. Jakiro's doing perfectly fine as far as his mana. He could keep doing this all day, or Bambo already burning through two of his uh, tango charges. Kroki is farming the jungle, and Bambo continuing to persist on this top lane, maybe hoping for Calculus to slip up on his lane equilibrium, but Calculus is doing the necessary things, attacking the creeps, not even caring about denying, knowing that Bambo is not even in experienced range. He's attacking his own creeps to pull them closer to his friendly tower, and it's working out for him. The mid lane, Sing Sing against this dual lane, is forced to play extremely cautiously. A single disruption will mean the death of the Warlock. He's going to go for Fatal Bonds. Uh, you can keep Fatal Bonds at a fairly low level. I don't really know what the skill build, or what the quote unquote standard skill build is for a Warlock that's soloing a mid lane. Uh, truth be told, I've never actually seen this before. So that's also why I kind of want to see him. He's going to go for lots of Shadow Words. So he wants that heal. Try to get some sustain on the lane. Bambo, this is not what you want to be doing, man. Ice Path is going to run right into it. The Creeps also doing a sizable chunk of damage as well. Atsy could just run with Bambo, although Bambo does have boots. He's going to fly down to the high ground. So he's going to pull the Creep Wave. Do a little bit of a Lone Druid-esque play there. Hopefully going to... <laughs> is that really necessary, Bambo? That could have helped you so much, man. But he's instead going to get chased down by these creeps, take a lot of damage in the meantime. He should be safe, though. Tinker, does he have... What build is he going? He's going for a heat-seeking missile. Um, not really indicative of a skill build quite yet, because one laser, or at least one laser, is 100% standard, if nothing else but the mischance. 
Meanwhile, on this bot lane, Quicks not getting many creep kills, being pressured back by the uh, support Alex. Also, Undying is not bad as, hey, 1v1. Oh, I completely missed the initiation on Sing Sing. He does have this high level Shadow Word on him, so he's going to live. The Disruption Soul Catcher Torrent not quite doing enough damage. And Warlock is a very soft hero, but I mean, he's not that soft. 23 strength. How much strength does Jakiro have? 26. Yeah, I mean, this, the differential is kind of small. So, Warlock will be able to survive on that, but you saw how much damage he took. It was so very close. Uh, but Black, as I was saying before, is very capable of pushing back the Tidehunter just by himself. A melee versus a melee, Undying is going to have a pretty large advantage there, unless, uh, especially against another strength hero. Uh, especially combined with the fact that he already does have the level advantage. Uh, normally I would say Tidehunter would be able to subsist because of that Anchor Smash, but with Black on the other end, uh, the Anchor Smash doesn't really mean all that much. I guess it will be a little bit annoying for him, but then again he does have Alex to fall back on to provide him with that support. Disruption Torrent, perfect onto Sing Sing. Kuroki gonna ward that aggressiveness away with his big ol' Ursa Warrior. Or, yeah it is an Ursa Warrior. I, I don't never remember anymore if it's an Ursa Warrior or a Furbog Warrior. I think there's both now. Do we have any heavy camps? No, we don't. That's unfortunate. Can't actually test. I think it was a Furbog in Dota 1, although I could be crazy. Looks like Tombstone got dropped down on this bot lane. Just gonna ward away quicks. Meanwhile, in the top lane, Bambo stacking up a ton of charges onto Atsy. He can't actually follow through with this. It's only a level 1 tar. So Atsy is completely blackened from head to toe, but now he's going to be just fine as it all somehow falls off at the exact same time, because that makes a lot of sense, Dota. Uh, Kroki has left the jungle, and he is going to be pushing down the spot lane with Black as well as Alex. Let's level an Edict. It is level 2 Edict, so this tower is going to get brought down. Destroyed by Chen's Ursa Warrior. And this lane being very aggressive for MYM, knowing that Quicks doesn't have any capabilities to actually stop this. He could try to walk up an anchor smash, but he's going to do uh, he's gonna take a lot more damage than he's actually going to do versus this lane. And this push isn't showing any signs of stopping. Undying isn't the greatest pushing hero. He does have a little bit of sustain for his team with Soul Rip, and he could burst down a creep wave when the decay gets to a higher level. So it's mostly just reliant on Kroki's creeps as well as Alex's edict. And now that Kroki is out of creeps. I can't really continue off with that push. They did get what they came for, though. They got the tower nice and easy. And uh, still 0-0, five minutes into the game. Kind of surprising. MYM, uh, they do are typically a little bit more of a cautious team, not willing to make the dives, but GDB, eh, not so much. They do have a very early game base team, as I was saying before. So they're just taking their time right now. Just going to get the try to get some level advantage with uh, all their lanes, which... The bottom line is doing very well, but the mid and top lane is f being contested fairly heavily. 19 for 7 versus 11 for 5, so the Warlock getting a, lo a lot more, actually, than I thought he would actually get. And Bambo, 7 for 0. Oh. Even Atsy is 7 for 2. Bambo is going to take a lot of flame damage from this Jakiro. Apparently, dragons do beat bats. So, Bambo, he's doing okay for a long lane here, I guess. Level 4 versus... Yeah, level 5. I think Bambo would just benefits so much from starting to stack this up, pull that, and then use the Firefly plus the Napalm to burn it down all in one go. really want to know what this Warlock is going. A solo mid lane Warlock. I don't even know if I could compare this to anything. The closest I could think of is something like a solo mid lane Lion? A D but even then, it's like, Lion actually has some offensive capabilities, whereas Warlock is pretty much a purely defensive hero, at least by himself. By himself. With, uh, Lion could, do, could make things happen without any support. Warlock can't really do that. You could try to go for a kill if you get lucky Fatal Bonds and drop a rock on someone. But uh, if you're going to solo lane a Warlock, he's going to get the levels. And Warlock does excel, he does really well with levels. But with gold, he's probably going to head towards a fast mech. Uh, Kuroki, how oh, well is he farming? He's not farming that bad. He's he's actually almost at his mech of his own. Very, very fast mech being picked up by Kuroki. He's been farming this entire game, plus got the tower on top of that. So he's doing okay for himself. Uh, Warlock could go for a little bit of utility. He could be the one getting the pipe if Black is not. Black might go for Vanguard, might go for pipe. Too early to tell. 
Uh, but Warlock could go for something like Necrobook, play it like a uh, Nyx Assassin or something. Push in the bot lane is going to be successful as Quick's forced back from the tower by Black. And the Edict with the two Centaurs is going to bring down that tower. And GDB looks like they want to take a tour of the Tier 1s. The entirety of the bot lane moving towards the mid, looking for a kill onto Rise or Balsam. Whoever they get is going to be perfectly okay for them. But they are completely spotted out by a ward plus the Shadow Poison from Rise, who actually is going more Shadow Poison. Wants a little bit more early game damage. Uh, normally, with especially with a uh, Kunkka to dual lane with, you would expect he would get more Soul Catcher because Kunkka puts out a lot of damage by himself, especially when you consider the fact that uh, Disruption pretty much guarantees a Torrent to land. And a Torrent does it does decent damage. 300 damage is kind of the average, or you know, it's a decent spell. Its spell damage is fairly high. But when you combine that with Soul Catcher Amplification, that is a lot of damage that's pretty much guaranteed. Whereas Shadow Poison, it's not the exactly the best skill for Shadow Demon, unless, of course, you are going to be soloing in mid lane. Speaking of the mid lane, there's going to be a pretty aggressive push. Here comes the boat, not going to hit onto anyone. That's what I call a fail boat. And Kroki is going to send his creeps, try to fight with Balsam. Decay from the low ground, and Black is going to get right in there, but he gets disrupted. The rock gets dropped in the middle of everything. Quicks with a one man ravage only onto Black as Kunkka is the first one to fall. Kroki, uh, Quicks, I'm sorry, he's going to get flame broken back into the clutches of the GDB side. And with the Edict still active, with these two centaurs still alive, plus the chaotic offering who thinks he's Roshan. They both think they're Roshan. <laughs> Uh, they are going to demolish that tower. They could move up to the top lane. Even Bambo joining the fight only got one assist, that, but that was a very crucial assist. That was pretty much all him getting the Tide Hunter, who was trying to run away. Perfect flame break positioning there. And GDB with the giant amount of team fight. Even though they only actually got one kill from that, are you kidding? They got two. That was the first blood. Wow. Okay. So Kanka dropped for the first blood to Chen. I thought they got. <laughs> I was like under the impression that there were previous kills. I guess I just completely missed that. I don't know. But GDB's Bambo did get a little bit of something from that. Now hit the level 6 mark, so he is at that useful level for the Batrider. Already being very useful. You already saw that with the Flame Break. But GDB with the team fight, that Flesh Golem from Black just leading the charge. And then uh, the Fatal Bonds plus the Chaotic Offering on top of that. So much magical damage. And MYM, they would benefit a lot from the pipe as well. But the only person to actually get it would be the Tidehunter, and he's not doing all that great. Let's see what Black is getting. Still holding on to a little bit of gold. The mech is almost purchased up. It is purchased up by Kroki. It just should be flying out to him momentarily. It is right there, actually. But GDB taking a pretty deep advantage this early on into the game. Ten minutes in already, three towers down. With a pushing, with the uh, lineup that I wouldn't actually actually call a pushing lineup. Yes, they have Chen. Yes, they have Lashrak. But other than that, the other three heroes aren't the best pushers. Yet they have already caved out the bottom lane. Already halfway done with the mid lane as well. They could head towards the top lane if Kroki wants to move up there. But without the Undying Tombstone, which is, quite frankly, the most dangerous spell in the game right now. I would even argue a lot more dangerous than the Chaotic Offering, or even the Ravage at this point. Uh, just because it's so hard to kill the Tombstone when all your heroes don't do much damage. And those zombies, they stack up. And it's very, very hard to deal with. So yeah, I, I do think Tombstone at this point in the game is even more powerful than the Ravage. Uh, it's it's kind of a, a very debatable point. I can see a lot of people disagreeing with me on that, but uh, still a very deadly aggressive spell. Alex is going to find Atsy in the jungle. Ba Bambo also here could get a net. He is going to get the net onto Atsy. Pull him right into the Lashrak. Split Earth is going to hit the Edict damage. Will it be enough? No, the Friendly Disruption is going to keep him alive as the Hand of God also keeps the GDB side alive. Calculus is going to drop off some machines. Atsy still very slow from the tar. Is going to get everything dispelled out from the... Uh, he's going to get the tar dispelled from him. Just timing it out. Now Black going to narrowly dodge the torrent. Bambo still alive in the back end. Going to have Calculus pushed towards the Flesh Golem. There it is. And now Calculus is going to drop immediately. Quicks rise as well as Balsam. All do have those Fatal Bonds on them, but they're not taking any damage. Uh, so they should be fine. Black going to get Ice Path plus a Ravage. Instantly going to kill off that Batrider. Black taking a lot of damage as well. Here comes the boat. It is going to land squarely onto Sing Sing's face. Black still alive, taking the Shadow Heal. 
Is he healed during that? I have no idea, but Black is getting a lot of healing from this Flesh Golem form. Everything's just dying around him, and he's getting so much health because of that. MYM still on the run, still throwing out their spells, and GDB, they're slowly getting weaker and weaker. Salvo from actually keeping him healthy, and Black is going to be the one to fall. Now, Kuroki and Sing Sing, they got to make their way out of here. They are going to. Missile's going to follow through. Not going to kill anything. As we now have Bambo and Alex, what are you doing there? Picking off the Shadow Demon, trading his life for the Kunkka. Definitely not a good trade for GDB. Although, uh, sometimes you just got to get that kill, man. Bambo has teleported back into here, and, well, MYM, they got a couple of kills out of that. GDB, they also got a couple of kills out of that. Now that the Chaotic Offering is down, Chen only with one creep, uh, and, no, Lashrak. I don't think they could actually successfully push that in this tower, although, MYM, they're all fairly weak. They could still defend this if they want to. They are going to. The Marching Machines is maxed out. Tinker, with his boots of travel, is going to do everything that he could possibly do in his power to save this tower. And with the March of the Machines at the end of the Creep Wave, it looks like it is going to be a successful defense. Undying is going to go for that pipe, so I am just on the ball today. I always love it when I make predictions, and it's just correct. It's just simply correct. It's like everything I've been doing so far hasn't been a complete waste of time. This guy is a Furbog. Look, this guy's an Ursa. This guy's a Furbog. I don't know why they're chilling together, but they are. It makes no sense. Bambo, Fireflying, looking for that Tinker. Not going to find him though, instead going to make a little bit of a firewall for the creep wave. And this tower is now going to drop Lashrak on the mid lane though, trying to defend against Balsam and Quicks. But this tower should drop regardless, Fortification is going to slow them down. Atsy on the front lines has maxed out his dual breath. He's going to have a lot of firepower, get it? Fire, he's a dragon, fire, okay. He's going to have a lot of firepower there and Calculus has arrived. The tower does stand with that use of that fortification. In the meantime, the mid lane, Balsam with a double damage rune. You do not want to get near this if your name is Lashrak. And the only person to defend this is named Lashrak. He's going to land a split earth. No, he's going to completely whiff a split earth. And Balsam, if you get hit by the cleave, you're pretty much dead. Yeah, you're going to be hurting later, GDB. They're going to fortify this bot lane tower. Try to defend this in the meantime. The top lane is going to get pushed. The tower is still alive, though. The missiles are constantly flying. Calculus with the march of the machines. Constantly teleporting back and forth from the base, and the tombstone has been dropped. Balsam and everyone else actually from MYM just running out of that. So this time the tombstone not being very used very effectively. Balsam is going to make things happen. The tower is finally dropped, and the zombies are still summoning. Atsy is going to get in a little bit of trouble. The ship is going to come in, give Atsy a lot more effective HP. But Black still on the front lines. There's the ravage onto three. Alex is going to drop in an instant. Black is going to get a double kill instantly, and Quicks is also going to die as Rise now on the run. Going to take a couple stacks of tar. Froki on the chase, Black on the chase, but a Flesh Golem times out. I don't believe that GDB could continue pushing this, but still trading three for one, including one of those being the Kunkka. A very successful push from GDB, just the fact that they're going to pop off all their ultimates at the same time. That Chaotic Offering is a very long range decision. Bambo saved his lasso. He's going to get Calculus, but instantly denied by Rise, but it doesn't matter. The, uh, you can't drag him back, but you could sure as hell keep him there. That is enough time for Kroki to nab that kill as MYM lose another hero. And GDB, their Warlock initiation is pretty darn high. Look at this range. It's pretty sick. And the stun is huge. Once you drop that down, allow a path for the Undying to get in, who now does have a pipe, so he's not going to fear any March of the Machines in the future. That's just an instant team fight that MYM they are going to really struggle because Kunkka, he needs positioning. He needs time. He usually excels with being the aggressor because once he has that, he could line up a good ghost ship. And a good ghost ship could mean the difference between a one team fight and a lost team fight. Uh, Tidehunter also needs a little bit of time to set up a Ravage. Not as much, though. If he gets jumped on, he could just pop off his Ravage and know that he hit at least one person, unless he's completely incompetent, which he is not in this game. GDB, just with the amount of sudden burst damage, the amount of stuff that pops up, and really the scrambling power, the pressure that, that the instant pressure that that applies to MYM, it's just instantly makes them, uh, it kicks in a reaction that's like, oh shit, there's a chaotic offering. There's Bambo shackling my Tinker out of the battle. There's all this stuff in Calculus. Speaking of being shackled out of the battle, he's going to take a test of faith. Firefly as well, he's going to drop. And after that, it's just like, MYM are crap in their pants. They're unhappy. Their instant instinct is to run, because they need Kunkka to run back a little bit to at least get his ghost ship out. The ghost ship hasn't really been hitting that many people. In the meantime, Quicks on the bot lane has taken down the, top, the bottom tier 1 tower, but in exchange for a top tier 2, eh, not exactly what I would call worth it. Not like he could save it, though. He doesn't even have his Ravage yet. 
Black does have that pipe off, but they don't even need it for this tower. Edict is going to be enough. Lashak does pick that one off, and that's going to be the top lane completely carved out. The Blink Dagger even being purchased up by the Batrider. So GDB, their initiation is absolutely insane. Have Sing Sing open up with the Chaotic Offering. Have the Batrider blink in. Drag someone out so that the rest of his team have to deal with a Tombstone plus Flesh Golem on dying. It is just not a fun situation. Balsam, what the hell are you doing there? Flaming Lasso, it is going to cancel. And now Balsam is screwed. He could try to fight his way out of this, but I don't really like his odds. There you go. Black getting yet another kill. Going for that pipe. What else is he going to go for? Usually with Undying, you go for bulk because your your goal is to sit as long as you can in the Flesh Golem form. Something like a Heart of Tarrasque won't be that bad. Or we might be seeing some Armor Auras or uh, possibly a Shiva's Guard. It won't be a bad idea. It will all be amplified by the Flesh Golem. Also amplified by the Fatal Bonds, which are now maxed out. Sing Sing, only with a level 1 on that Chaotic Offering still. Kind of surprising, actually. Oh no. It's level 18. Undying is the only one who's level 11 on the map, so never mind. Uh, level 1 on the Chaotic Offering, soon to be a level 2 golem that he could drop on someone's head. And already, the GDB have had the team fights go very well for them with that offering. It's going to get even better as the game progresses, especially since the Fatal Bonds have been landing on a couple of MYM heroes, and it's just so hard to evaluate when you should run and when you should fight when you have Fatal Bonds on your team. Because it's you don't feel like it should be doing a lot, and it doesn't look like it's doing a lot, until you all die, and then, and then you realize, hey, we probably shouldn't have been fighting there. That was a, that was a bad idea. Calculus is going to start the march of the machines. Flame break is going to hit Rise, but just push him back a little bit. Level three on the flame break, only holding with that firefly for level one. Quick skin blink right in, get a five man ravage. No, not five man. Sing Sing is going to stay in the back. He's going to drop down his offering. The pipe does pop off Kroki, trying to stay alive, popping off all of his heals, but he does get burned down by the macro fire. He's the only one to die. Black taking heavy heavy damage but he's gonna be okay as well the tombstone's still down gonna get a life drain onto quicks the tombstone as i said before is doing work there's the blink forward from bambo gonna pull in atsy do a lot of damage with the fatal bonds as well atsy is as good as dead goodbye bat rider flame break trying to cancel off the boots of travel from the tinker unfortunately not in time now rise gotta be in a little bit of trouble as well black is constantly throwing out these nukes but there is no lockdown on this team anymore there are Going to survive the rest of the MIM side. Bambo taking a lot of damage. X marks the spot. Torrent is going to hit. And that's going to be the end of the Bat Rider's life. Sing Sing running away from missiles. Going to take it to the Asp. Quicks giving chase. Is he going to get in range for the Gush? I don't think it's possible. No, it's not possible. He's going to fall back. And MIM. Well, they drop a couple heroes, but they also gain a couple heroes. That was actually in favor of MIM there. GDB. Well, it's never a really good idea to get initiated upon with a four-man Ravage. Ideally, you don't want that to happen. It was only a level one Ravage, which is now going to be level two. But uh, just that situation, very, very rough for GDB. Ravage on a clump of heroes, plus Ice Path, plus Macro Pyre, which burned down Kuroki's health, also did a sizable chunk of damage to the Bat Rider. Yeah, it's not a good situation if you're on the GDB side. But you can see Sing Sing with his positioning. I don't know if he forced staffed himself away or anything. He's, bottom line, he's, he didn't get hit. So, oh, Bambo getting forced staffed forward by Sing Sing. Self disruption is going to save the Shadow D. No, that was Bambo. Where did the Shadow. What the hell? So I have no idea what the hell just happened. I wasn't really paying that much attention, supposedly. But, oh, Bambo blinks right in. Gonna catch Calculus before he can teleport out. The slow. Oh, no, Bambo. Why'd you gotta do that? Looks like it doesn't matter, though. The nukes from Black going to be enough. Bambo almost saving the enemy with the flame break, but hey, no harm, no foul. They got the kill. That is going to mean this tier 2 tower is now under pressure once again. They need the March of the Machines, or at least the Ravage. Ravage is not going to be up for 15 seconds, and GDB, have they learned their lesson? They're spread out a little bit more, making a little more of a crescent shape, which is uh, pretty safe against the Ravage. The pipe did save them a whole lot of hassle in that last fight as soon as they got out of the stun lock. Popped off the pipe, and that mitigated a lot of the Jakiro damage that I was mentioning before. But MYM, without the Tinker, are not capable of defending this set, this tier 2 tower, and is going to drop. Now GDB, they do still have four towers of their own. Balsam on the bot lane, pushing that out. Has picked up a Shadow Blade, going to go for as much damage as he possibly could. Maybe going to one-hit kill someone? Maybe, maybe, no. Probably not. That would be Sing Sing's uh, Kunkka, which he's not playing Kunkka. He's playing the freaking Warlock, which... Really, he was, he's doing pretty well. 
the Warlock is being very effective. The Fatal Bonds on his team, plus the Chaotic Offering, kind of acting as a Naga Siren kind of ultimate, where it's just, everyone, stop. We need time. Just everyone on here on the enemy team, just stop doing whatever the hell you're doing. I'm going to do something right now. And he's going to head for an Echo Book. So it's always nice to see whenever teams pick up new heroes, or un unseen heroes, rarely seen heroes, that they do really well. And it's always crappy if, if Sing Sing was, if uh, GDB picked the Warlock and then he got thrashed like 2-9-0. It's, it's not fun to see. But it's working out, so everything's, everything's fine. Do enjoy seeing new heroes being played effectively. Because then people are like, oh, well, Sing Sing played the Warlock in the game versus MYM, and he did really well. Bambo going to start Fireflying, looking for someone. He's going to find Balsam. He's going to drag him. No, he cannot. The Disruption, such a great anti bat rider tool, is going to save Balsam at least for a little bit. The pipe is going to pop off as well. And Roshan dropped down to half HP. Bambo does not have that lasso anymore, though. So GDB, their fighting capabilities are extremely diminished. Are they still going to go for this? Do they have any arcane boots? There's some arcane boots. Two pairs of arcane boots. Are there two? There's three pairs of arcane boots, actually. So Bambo will have mana in no time, but he doesn't have that lasso right now. And MYM, they know that GDB aren't willing to take a fight right now, but uh, still black on the front lines is pretty darn intimidating. He does have a hard Rask uh, Vanguard as well. That's not, that's an, that isn't the hardest Rask. Alex taking a ton of damage from the dual breath, plus all of the damage from the Tinker. There's the Chaotic Offering being dropped on the Quicks. Black is going to drop his tombstone, and you got to focus this tombstone. Quicks is instead trying to go for Black, but he's look at the amount of health he is getting back in this fight. He's just undying. Get it? Right? Okay, Jakiro still on the run. Going to pop off his mech, try to save himself. Black trying to juke out some of the uh, spells coming out from Kunkka. It's not going to be enough. He is going to get a little bit of health absorption there. Balsam, is he spotted out? Is there a gem? There is a gem onto the Bat Rider. Calculus now taking full damage from the Edict. Quick, uh, Alex, even popping off that Edict is uh, the Pulse Nova, I'm sorry, is going to get that kill. Black, Soul Ripping Balsam, not yet enough to kill him. Going to chase him with Decay, still not enough to kill him. 19 HP as Kunkka does make his way out of here. In that fight, I do believe GDB lost that fight. Uh, Tinker, Kunkka, Kunkka versus Undying Lashrag. Yes, MYM did win that fight once again. No lasso on the Batrider. And really, that Shadow Demon, such a great counter to the Bat Rider. You just disrupt the Bat, and well, then he needs to buy a BKB if he actually wants to drag someone back, which is, you know, it's pretty important when you're playing Bat Rider to drag people back. It's not exactly, yeah, it's not exactly optional with Bat Rider. And so he's going to need a BKB if he wants to do that, or at least wait until the disruption gets used. But if he just jumps in like he did before, trying to go for a Kunkka pickoff or something like that, the disruption is just going to say no. Not a chance in hell. Black, you saw how tanky he was, and that's the power of a farming undying. The flesh golem does give you HP, uh, some complicated thing. It's just when people die, then you get healed, I think. Yeah, so when things die, you get health. It just seems very mysterious to me, because it's always so unpredictable how much health you actually get. Flame breaks flying out, missiles flying out in retaliation. GDB. Posing like they want to take Roshan. Roshan has healed up quite a bit, however, so it's going to be a little bit of a struggle for them. And MYM, they do not have a Ravage for another 30 seconds. So if GDB are going to take a Roshan, then this is going to be the time for them. But the Shadow Poison, there's the disruption. There's the last one, I'm sorry, onto Balsam. No disruption this time from Rise is going to ultimately save the Kunkka, at least for now. Black is going to drop the Tombstone a little bit further back, though. There's a slow from Sing Sing, slowing down Balsam as well as Atsy as they try to make their way out. Calculus back into this fight. Black still in the front lines. Alex in the front lines as well. The ship's going to fly through. Not hit onto anything, though, as the pipe does pop off. Atsy is going to be picked off following Rise's suit, and Balsam trying to run away. Doesn't earn charge on him, but he should be fine. Blink forward from Bambo is going to take down one. Is going to take down Quicks. Black still so darn healthy. Going to kill off the Kunkka. Going to kill off Quicks. And Undying has just killed all of MYM. Impossible to kill this kid. Calculus, you're in the wrong area, sir. You better make your way out of here. The Fatal Bonds almost killing Calculus. Oh, that was that was close right there. But the heals on Sing Sing, the heals from Kuroki's Mech plus Hand of God, and the fact that Black is being healed like a million HP from his ultimate does mean that they, this time, take a fight over MYM. They did use the Ravage, but unfortunately, not good enough. Even though the Tombstone wasn't placed perfectly from Black, like, uh, by the time the fight actually broke out, the Tombstone was pretty much uh, useless. They did take the fight regardless. They're not going to take the Rax, as I don't feel. Macro Pirate plus March of the Machines, very hard to push against. 
and Undying, does he have the pipe? In three seconds, he does, so they could go for the next wave. Kunkka still down for another 10 seconds, but it looks like they don't want to make uh, take the chances there. They're instead going to fall back, or at least pretend like they're falling back. With the amount of heals, the urn charges, the shadow words, a little three shadow words. He's actually going to mix it up with upheaval a little bit. Arcane boots, they could go right back in for this. The Ravage is down, and GDB, Flesh Golem is up. Chaotic Offering is up as well. They're at their strongest, whereas MYM, I would argue that they're even at their weakest point right now with no Ravage, no Macro Pyre. I go, although they do have the Kunkka Boat, it's uh, it's not necessarily the strongest that they could possibly be at. There's the pipe being popped off. Black, you know, drop down the Tombstone 100% as a deterrent. Now Balsam, is he going to go in for a Slash? He can't. Tombstone still on the front lines, 800 HP, you gotta break through. Black taking huge amounts of damage, what the hell happened? Balsam with the crit on the Shadow Blade is gonna kill off Black instantly. The Chaotic Offering gets dropped, but not killing anyone. Just sick the Infernal on the melee racks. Here comes the boat, hit onto the Infernal. Not hit onto the Infernal, I changed my mind. But Black's HP just melted away. Balsam with the Shadow Blade crit Tidebringer hit. And there's only like a, what, 20% chance of that happening? But it messed the hell out of Undying. And Undying is a tanky hero, yes, but if you could burst him down with physical, that is pretty much unblockable. Uh, his health isn't that high, especially since he didn't have a chance to get Decay off, he didn't steal any strength, he didn't increase his health pool or anything like that. The only thing that does give him more health is that Vanguard and <laughs> also, I guess, Magic Wand. But he just got bursted down in the matter of seconds. Insane damage coming out from this Kunkka. Problem is you are not going to find an opportunity to do that all the time, and when you do find an opportunity to do that, it's only a 20% chance that it'll actually happen. If that didn't happen, Black would have been completely fine. You see only 1400 health on this Undying without Decay stacks, uh, so that's a lot of damage coming out from Kanka. But Black would have been completely fine, and MYM definitely wouldn't have engaged upon that, but I do believe that crit was instrumental in saving their melee racks. If that didn't happen, Black would have popped off the uh, what is it called? Flush Golem. Started soul ripping, decaying everything. But getting Ice Path into an instant crit from the Kunkka Shadowblade from a mile away, it's hard to defend against that because you simply don't have the time. Croaky's a great Chen, but even he can't react that fast to that much damage because sim you don't, you simply don't expect it. I'm sure now they'll be aware of that fact, but the Chaotic Offering is down for another minute. This time the Ravage is up. Ravage is up. There you go. So this is, defense is not going to be successful. Balsam getting dragged back into his ta into the tier 2 tower. The upheaval as well. He's going to try to teleport out. Not on Black's watch though. Balsam so very aggressive. The smoke gets popped unsuccessfully though. Uh, the wasted smoke there. They were just trying to get to the mid lane a little bit quicker. They are going to make their way there with the Kunkka down for 50 seconds. Does he have buyback? He does have buyback. So he could revive if he needs to. I think GDB are probably just going to push down the mid lane. Not in an attempt to take Raxes, although they would like to take Raxes. Mostly just to pressure out the buyback from the Kunkka. And Kunkka, he needs to buy back, or else there is going to be a melee Rax to deal with on the mid lane. GDB, they're going to push very aggressively. There's the buyback from Kunkka. Still has to walk here, but look at that. GDB just falling back. Still, oh, well, they do have their Chaotic Offering. Lasso not up in 15 seconds, though. So they need that if they want to fight. Now that Batrider does have his Force Staff, he could actually pull someone out in the uh, fight over here. Rise was out of range of disruption, actually. And he act, uh, wasn't in range to disrupt the Batrider or disrupt the Kunkka or disrupt anyone at all. So that's the reason why the Lasso worked then. And now that the Force Staff is up, the, the Lasso has a higher chance of working, although it's still not... It's not a for sure thing, not by a long shot. Right now, they are all smoked up. GDB looking for a pick. Who are they going to go for? They have to go for Balsam, I feel. There it is. They are going to go for Balsam Disruption. Not going to happen this time. The huge Ravage, though, countered by a Chaotic Offering. Sing Sing taking a lot of damage. Going to force himself out of here. Ship going to fly through. Not down to anyone, though. The Rum is on everyone, but Balsam is already down. And that's their primary damage dealer for MYM. Quicks trying to make things happen versus Alex. Not going to happen. Slowed to a crawl because of the upheaval. Kuroki getting that kill. Now Al Atsy trying to hold off Bambo. He is going to get the kill on the uh, Batrider, but now he's going to die in exchange. Black with the punching power of an Undying is going to pick him off. And MYM, they lose three. And GDB with the healing. They could get Alex up to full health in no time at all. This tower, uh, the, the Raxes, I'm sorry, are going to be in trouble. 
Calculus is going to try to march to the machines to counter this off, but the pipe not even being popped off from Black is instead going to give a little bit more longevity to his creep wave. This uh, melee racks is going to go down, interruption onto the Undying. Going to slow them down just a little bit, but there's really nothing that these two heroes can do to stop these racks. As the mech does pop off Alex back to almost full HP. And fortification or no fortification, these raxes are going down at least the melee raxes, which is the most important thing to achieve when you're going for a set of raxes. You can even, they're even sticking around. Gonna get the ranged racks, although that shadow poison is stacking up awfully high. How much damage is this actually gonna do? Kinda wanna see. Disruption onto someone. Wasn't looking, I was looking at the freaking poison charges. It's only gonna do 500 damage. Not, not the big deal. Alex is going to drop from the missiles. And Black is gonna try to run out of here. Sing Sing and Kroki also in a little bit danger. Balsam giving chase with that shadow blade. Kroki is gonna take an X mark spot plus a torrent. Goodbye, Chen. Goodbye, Ch goodbye, Chen. There you go. So GDB losing a little bit of something as they try to make their way out, but they did get the exactly what they wanted to. They got the melee racks, so mission accomplished as far as they're concerned. And once the Chen is back up, once all their ultimates are back up, which shouldn't be that long, the longest ultimate cooldown that they have is that chaotic offering. Uh, a little bit l more cooldown than the Ravage, but uh, hey, racks are racks. Mym gonna make good of their two kills by picking up a Roshan. They will be able to get this pretty easily with the damage that Balsam is doing combined with Liquid Fire, slowing down that Roshan. Someone has a Medallion as well, it's a Shadow Demon. Batrider though, spotting them all out. Is he gonna steal this Is he gonna steal it? Please steal it, I really wanna see that happen. No, he's gonna push Rise onto the high ground. You are stuck, sir. Is there any four stats? I don't think there are. Roshan, gotta watch out. Bambo's gonna move in. He's not gonna take anything though, he's instead going to feed his life. Rise though, stuck for the entirety of that, just stuck around for some experience. He's going to teleport himself out of there. He's going to be just fine. Bambo trying to make big plays happen. I don't think I've actually seen an Aegis Steel like that, where everyone knows that they're there, but they still happen anyway. I guess the Naga Siren... Na uh, what was it? IG versus Navi? Naga Siren stole the Aegis with the Song of the Siren a couple times in the TI2 games. That's about it, though. But 23 to 15. Haven't looked at the gold graph in quite a while. It is in favor of GDB with the racks down, but only by 5,000, uh, with two towers still up on their side. Uh, the experience advantage really showing that MYM not too far behind, but uh, with the racks down, they're going to get their income severely restricted. And GDB, well, keep in mind that GDB are still working on a clock. They don't have any dedicated right-click damage dealers. They're still working a lot on the flat values, on the damage amplification, on the fatal bonds power. They don't have anyone to scale into the late game necessarily. Alex does have a BKB. But other than that, he's kind of a lightweight. So GDV, they're still working on a clock, but with the pickup of that melee racks, they have extended their clock by another 5 to 10 minutes. Now they're going to look towards the top lane. Should be a pretty even fight, however. This Kunkka is starting to get really dangerous. Even Tidehunter now with a pipe. But once that happens, a lot of magic damage is not going to come out from GDB. Although the Fatal Bonds is still going to be quite a pain in the ass, being HP removal. So you can't really prevent that. I don't think there's a single way to prevent that, actually. Unless, unless like, flat heals, but that doesn't really count. So GDB, they're going to look towards a second set of Raxes, playing exactly as they need to. Pretty much every time they have the Chaotic Offering, they're pushing the base. It's so refreshing to see people actually doing that instead of just dicking around, doing God knows what while their cooldowns sit there, while their heroes become less and less effective. Undying, gonna go for a soul booster. Kind of interesting pick there. Uh, I guess could be Aghanims and Heart, but I doubt it. In the meantime, the mid lane is being pushed by Balsam. Does he have a TP? He better have a TP. If he doesn't have a TP, oh my god, that would have been GG right now. He got a. He has to move back. But Quicks and Balsam just trying to take down this tier two before the tier three is are in trouble. Black, he's gonna pipe for this wave. He's going to pipe the next wave. There it is. Pipe is up, Black on the front line is going to get disrupted, but there's Bambo going to pull out the Shadow Demon, no Shadow Demon for this fight, going to get instantly picked off by the Warlock, Atsy going to throw out an Ice Path, throw out some fire, he's going to macro pyre Black, but they just simply fall back, Shadow Demon does buy back into the game, don't know how the hell Shadow Demon can afford a buyback, but he does, GDB, use the pipe, use the, uh, what's it called, lasso, in order to draw out a buyback for MYM, and they could go again very, very shortly, the Tombstone is a pretty high cooldown spell, but it is still available to them. And with the healing on their team, they should be able to make a go in just a, a little bit. Calculus, though, with the March of the Machines and now a Shiva's Guard, 
making it so very difficult for them to actually do that. Even Calculus pushing down the bot lane, sending out wave after wave of machines and GDB. They can't really afford to sit here and do nothing. They have to make things happen, and that's exactly what they're going to do right now. They have to make something happen with this push. Otherwise, I feel like MYM have such a great opportunity to get back into this. Daedalus almost up with the Kunkka. He doesn't have buyback, though. So if they pick off this Kunkka, that is going to be pretty much game. Five seconds till the lasso is up. The smoke up from everyone in the back. Flame break, trying to pull Jakiro to the low ground. That would have been a death of Calculus is going to get pulled out by Bambo. X marks the spot, but double force staff. There's a huge ravage from Quicks, hitting absolutely everyone. Where is the Chaotic Offering? Sing Sing, you need to drop off that spell right now. There is the Chaotic Offering. Show stopping number right there. Black and drop down his tombstone as well as healing it. Making sure Balsam does not kill that thing off. He does get it eventually. Bambo is dead. Alex is dead. The Jakiro does buy back. The Aegis does get popped from the uh, Kunkka, but Black still trying to make things happen versus Quicks. He's still very healthy, but he is not able to fight against Balsam. The huge nukes onto Balsam, though. Damage or no damage, you are still a very soft hero. 1700 HP. The Chen chasing a little bit too far. Does run into an Ice Path. Sing Sing and Black on the run. Going to force half himself out, but now he is pretty much screwed. Anchor Smash does smash the Warlock down. In the meantime, Black going to make his way out. Should be fine. Mid Raxes are going to fall, though. So GDB do get range raxes, but it's a small consolation, a very small consolation. MYM defending so very easily. The Tinker, I don't even think the Tinker got dropped. He didn't get dropped. He survived there. So GDB, this you can see right now, GDB, even though they did take the raxes before, even though that fight didn't look all that awful for them, the fights are slowly going to become less and less effective for them. And that last team fight is basically showing exactly that. Bambo's probably going to get a pick off onto Calculus unless he reaches that haste and blink forward. Oh, now Calculus is screwed. <laughs> Drag him to the high ground. No. I guess you could just kill him. That's that's another way to go. Not as fun, but just as effective. Tinker does have buyback by the time in 20 seconds, so GDB can't actually reach the base by the time Tinker is alive. Is uh, Before the Tinker spawns, it is going to be an Aghanim Scepter, so even more damage amplification from Black, but still, there's no, there's not much damage to actually be amplified. It's all flat values, not even that high of flat values. Balsam, though, in a rough situation, going to get Flame Broken back into Bambo, but no, the disruption once again. Split Earth, not there. Bambo, does he have a Force Staff? Does he have a Blink Dagger? Going to Force Staff Alex forward. Balsam is going to get hit by the stun, and this could be the end of the Kunkka right now. If Kunkka dies, he does not have buyback. Bambo is going to move forward. He is going to drop Chen with the last hit there. The boat being wasted and Rise now in a little bit of trouble. Alex right on his ass going to land another split earth. Rise is going to drop. This could be the end of the game right here. No buybacks on the Shadow Demon. Not yet. Not for another minute. No buybacks on the Kunkka either. And GDB, are they going to go for GG? They're going to slide up to the top lane with Black to tank up. They should be able to take down this tower. Only 500 HP. Jakiro does not have his macro pyre. Calculus does have the March of the Machines. Bambo, though, going to say no to that. He's not interested in his March of the Machines. Black can drop on the Tombstone. Calculus is going to drop. Force Staff is not going to save him from the Lightning Blast. The tower does get dropped. The melee rack is in trouble now, and MYM still with 30 seconds of downtime. They are not going to be able to defend this. This is going to be the second set of Raxes going the way of GDB. And after that, I do believe with their early mid-game power strategy, they have pulled it out of the hat. They are going to take this game over MYM. Backdoor protection? Why is that working? There you go. The Raxes on the top lane do go down. Alex and Bambo already on the bot lane, starting to work on that tier 3 tower. And MYM, they, if they lose this Raxes, uh, this last set of Raxes, that's going to be it. They could still come back from two Raxes with the Kunkka. You pretty much demolish a wave of super creeps in one hit. But with everyone to tank, with a freaking Chen, Chen stealing the melee creeps, there's the curse disruption onto Bambo, but he's going to force that out. Huge be uh, Ravage from Quicks, as well as the Torrent, but Kuroki getting healed so much, plus the pipe. The boat is going to fly through, hit Kuroki in the face, but the slowdown from Sing Sing in the back. Quicks and Balsam, they're not moving anytime, any they're not moving anywhere anytime soon. Atsy even taking a lot of damage from the Fatal Bonds. He's going to drop to the Fatal Bonds. Sing Sing getting a double kill because of the Bonds. Balsam even dropping to that. Calculus going to force staff himself forward, get a laser kill onto the Lestrac. But Sing Sing still alive with the level 3 Necro Book. He can chase down Calculus and kill him solo. Look at the damage that these Necro Books are putting out. In the meantime, Undying near the Fountain, killing off the Shadow Demon, who instantly buys back into the game. But the Rax are exposed. Calculus trying to teleport his way out of here. He will make it back to the base, try to regenerate a little bit. By the time he is fully regenerated to full health, he will not have bottom raxes unless okay they're gonna fall back sure it is 2v uh, 3v2 so i guess it kind of makes sense 
in GDB without the chaotic offering, without the flesh golem for another 40 seconds. They don't, they're not in any rush. They have two raxes down, two complete raxes. So this game is going to go on for just a little bit more, but I don't like MYM's chances, to be honest. Their last raxes are so very weak, only 400 HP, probably about 500 by the time GDB reached their base again. But GDB has just been playing this so perfectly. The Warlock's upheaval. You usually don't level it early on, but if you do get it off uninterrupted, that slow is so crippling. It is an insane amount of slow. 28 lasts for up to 10 seconds, up to 84%, and that channeled for the entire duration. 84% slow. 84 freaking percent slow. On a hero like Kunkka, who needs to stick to his targets, yeah, he's going to be a sad pirate captain. Especially if this happens. Ball, uh, bam, Bo, getting the lasso onto Balsam, and Balsam is going to try to stealth out of that, but the level 3 Necro book is going to say, no, I see you. And Kunkka does drop 75 seconds where he is out of play. MYM, that's the end of the game. That Kunkka is, they need that Kunkka. Oh, they also need this Tinker. But the Tinker is not going to escape this time. Alex is going to go toe-to-toe. -to -toe. March the machines or not, he's going to take a lot of damage, but there's the Edict Laser. Alex, no, please don't make me wrong. No, he's, he's going to survive. There you go. Killing off the Tinker, killing off the, t the Kunkka, both without buybacks. That is the end of the game, ladies and gentlemen. There's nothing that MYM could do to solve this. Even if they hit a five-man Ravage with the Macro Pyre on top of that, GDB are tanky enough at this point to withstand all of that punishment, and it's just going to be a final death push into the melee and then range raxes, even the blink forward. Atsy, you are not safe there. Your base? Oh, it's our base, says GDB. Tombstone gets dropped for shits and giggles, and the melee raxes fall, the range raxes fall, and that is going to be Meg Creep's celebration, Infernal, who now thinks he's a dire candy bucket. This Infernal really having some identity issues. There's the GG call from Atsy. So MYM putting a valiant fight, almost getting powerful enough so that GDB will not have to, uh, enough damage to rely on, but unfortunately a couple of picks in that mid lane ultimately did lead to two complete sets of Raxes being taken, and it's just one mistake could cost you the game in these situations. So beautiful play from the GDB side, this is Warlock really working wonders for them, Kuroki is going to try to do a 1v2 as his last stand, popping off all his heals, oh run, run Kuroki, no not, don't run there! Disruption is going to save Kroki. Is the game going to end before Kroki dies? No, Kroki's going to die, and then the game's going to end. Black just not interested in anything else. Punching the tower, going to get that last in on the, rack, on the ancient. Thanks for watching, guys. This has been GDB versus MYM. This one does go to GDB. I believe it's a best of three from the winners. I have no clue. It's from something in the Star Series Season 3. But the Warlock did work out, and it's always refreshing to see new heroes work out for a team. Thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe, leave comments, all that stuff, because I do enjoy it when that sort of thing happens. And I do believe that's going to be it for me. GG, guys.